Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Brothers and sisters, welcome to a brand new episode of The End of Days. We're speaking about the trials and tribulations, the minor and the major signs that will come in the end of days, at the end of time, and some of the things that will lead up to that. Today, in this episode, inshallah, I would like to conclude our discussion on the major signs. So we spoke about them as part of a hadith in Kitab al-Fitan, Ashraf al-Sa'a, the book of tribulations and signs of the hour in Sahih Muslim. We spoke about the Prophet Sallallahu saying that the hour will not come until you see ten signs. And that time in that episode we spoke about the smoke. Since then we've spoken about the Dajjal. We've spoken about Isa. Ibn Maryam, alayhi wa ala nabiyyina, afdar salatu salam. We've spoken about Ya'juj and Ma'juj. We've spoken about the swallowing up of the earth in three places, in the west, in the east, and in the Arabian Peninsula. We've spoken about the beast that will come and will speak to the people. And now we come to speak about the sun rising from the west. And this is what is mentioned in the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal. هَلْ يَنْظُرُونَ إِلَّا أَنْ تَأْتِيَهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ أَوْ يَأْتِيَ رَبُّكَ أَوْ يَأْتِيَ بَعْضُ آيَاتِ رَبِّكَ يَوْمَ يَأْتِي بَعْضُ آيَاتِ رَبِّكَ لَا يَنْفَعُ نَفْسًا إِيمَانُهَا لَمْ تَكُنْ آمَنَتْ مِنْ قَبْلُ أَوْ كَسَبَتْ فِي إِيمَانِهَا خَيْرًا قُلْ انْتَظِرُوا إِنَّا مُنْتَظِرُونَ Do they wait for anything except that the angels should come, or your Lord will come, or some of the signs of your Lord will come. On the day when some of the signs of your Lord will come, it will not benefit a soul to have believed if it had not believed before or had not earned through its iman any good. Say, wait, indeed we are waiting. And this is ayah number 158 from Surah Al An'am. The scholars of Tafsir had a great deal of discussion over the meaning of يَوْمَ يَأْتِي بَعْضُ آيَاتِ رَبِّكَ On the day when some of the signs of your Lord will come. However, what we do know from this ayah, before we talk about what those signs actually are or what the sign actually is, is that Islam has a cut-off point. When it comes to the end of days, the minor signs come, the major signs come, the Dajjal will come and people can make tawbah. Isa, Ibn Maryam will come and people can make tawbah. Ya'juj and Ma'juj will come and people can make tawbah. It is said that, and Allah knows best because we don't know the order of the signs, perhaps the chasms in the earth and the, the swallowing up in the earth and the smoke, perhaps we can say, will come and people can make tawbah. But what is the point where there will be a cutoff and Iman will not be accepted? And notice that Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned two things. He mentioned if the soul had not believed before. لَمْ تَكُنْ آمَنَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِ If the soul had not believed before. And then Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned أَوْ كَسَبَتْ فِي إِيمَانِهَا خَيْرًا Or earned some good through its iman. And this is a side benefit that we learn, which is the importance of doing good deeds. And that iman requires and is made up of good deeds that you do. And it's not enough for a person simply to say, I believe. They see the sun rise from the west, and then they say, I believe. Rather, they must have believed, and they must have earned some good through their deeds. They must have done at least some deeds according to what time or according to what was available to them to do. They must have at least done something. And this is one of the ways of replying to the murji'ah, who said that actions are not a part of iman, that Allah Azza wa Jal requires not only iman, but Allah Azza wa Jal requires that before these signs come, that some good deeds are performed. أَوْ كَسَبَتْ فِي إِمَانِهَا خَيْرًا Say, wait, indeed, we are with those who are waiting. The scholars of tafsir and the scholars of hadith had a great deal of discussion regarding the meaning of يَوْمَ يَأْتِي بَعْضُ آيَاتِ رَبِّكَ on the day when some of the signs of your Lord will come. So some of them said, it is the rising of the sun from the west. 
And some of them said it is one of three. The Dajjal, the beast, and the rising of the sun from the west. However, we have a number of ahadith from the Prophet ﷺ which indicate to us that the one sign that matches the ayah perfectly is the rising of the sun from the west. Because of a narration in which the Prophet ﷺ said, ذَلِكَ حِينَ تَطْلُعُ الشَّمْسِ مِنْ مَغْرِبِهَا This is when the sun will rise from the west. And in some other narrations, it is mentioned that Tawbah will not cease until the sun rises from the west. وَلَا تِنْقَطِعُوا التَّوْبَةِ حَتَّى تَطْلُعَ الشَّمْسُ مِنْ مَغْرِبِهَا Until the sun rises from the west. So these ahadith clearly pin this event as being the sun rising from the west, as being the event when Tawbah is cut off. Will the beast come before or after? We said that on balance of evidence, there is no clear evidence to say which will come first, but there is a feeling or a slight weight towards the beast coming after the sun rising from the west, as the beast will mark the people as believer and disbeliever, and will tell the people the falsehood of the other religions, and Allah knows best. As for the other ayat, it's not clear as to the smoke, whether it will come before, although many of the scholars say it will come before both of those, and the swallowing up of the earth again, many scholars say that it will come after Ya'juj and Ma'juj, but bear in mind that this ordering is not something we have an evidence for, and so this is simply a matter of looking at the ahadith and coming up with the best educated guess. However, in reality, after Ya'juj and Ma'juj, and before the fire that will push the people to their final place of gathering, we do not have a clear evidence for the order of the signs. As for what will happen when the sun rises from the west, then this is mentioned in an authentic hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ said, Indeed, the sun goes and travels until it goes underneath the arsh. Then it seeks permission to go back again, and permission is given to it. And a time will soon come when permission will not be given. So we are told that the sun goes underneath the arsh and it asks permission from Allah Azza wa Jal to rise again. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives it permission. And there will soon come a time when permission will not be given to it. And it will seek permission to rise from the east and permission will not be granted to it. And it will be said to it, Irji'i, return back. Min jiti. Go back to the place that you came from. I.e., when you have now come from the west, now go back to the west. فَذَلِكَ قَوْلُ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ الشَّمْسُ تَجْرِي لِمُسْتَقَرٍ لَهَا And this is the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal. The sun travels in an orbit that is for it. And this is mentioned by Imam al-Bukhari in his Sahih. The sun comes under the arsh and seeks permission and that the sun is traveling in an orbit. This we know for certain and there is no way to understand the hadith and the ayah any other way than this. We are a people who believe in the Quran and we believe in the hadith of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We do not reject any Sahih hadith. Nor do we reject any ayah of the Quran. Whether scientists agree with it or don't agree with it. However, I'm not sure that this hadith or that this ayah is entirely clear that the sun orbits the earth on a daily basis. Allah knows best. It is clear that the sun is orbiting something, is going swimming along and moving in an orbit. And it is clear that the sun goes under the arsh and that it seeks permission to rise from the east and that permission is given to it. And that at one time it will not be given permission and that time the sun will rise from the west. This is something that Allah knows best how it happens. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the kayfiyyah, the way through which this happens, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. But we believe in this hadith absolutely as it is reported and we believe in this ayah as it is reported. وَالشَّمْسُ تَجْرِي لِمُسْتَقَرٍ لَهَا The sun moves in an orbit that is made for it by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Imam al-Bukhari narrated from Abu Hurairah 
the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said la taqumu as-sa'a hatta tatlu'a ash-shams min maghribiha fa idha ra'aha an-nas amana man 'alayha fa dhaka hina la yanfa'u nafsan imanuha lam takun amanat min qabl he said that the hour will not come until the sun rises from the west so when the people see it rise from the west all of them will believe and this is the time when it will not benefit a person if they had not believed before we're going to take a break inshallah after the break we'll continue our discussion and finish off with the remaining sign from the 10 signs of the day of judgment until then assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh or divorce What's Islamic ruling? Nikah. Solution or problem? Heaven or hell? Uh, there is a misconception. You choose. Beauty, wealth, family status, virtue. Decide what you want. Decide your choice. Be sad or be happy. It's your choice. Join Dr. Zakir Naik in Better Half or Bitter Half every Friday at 6.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 9.30 a.m. UK on Peace TV. He is Allah one and only. Allah the absolute and eternal. He begets not, nor is he begotten. There is nothing like him. Focus on the source of wisdom. The Quran is a magnet. The Sunnah is a revelation. Islam had the solution right from the beginning. We apply that and the problem is solved. Focus on the solution for our world. There is no man on the face of earth. His life was narrated to us like Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Poor, rich, white, black, Arab, non-Arab. Everybody say the same word. Obey Allah, obey the messenger. Focus on the Akhirah. Tawbah is mandatory upon each and every Muslim. Success for the Muslim is having the correct belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has power over all things. Has power over all things. Focus on the facts and realities that motivate the world towards Islam in Islam in Focus, next on Peace TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. We are speaking and indeed concluding our discussion on the major signs before the end of time. We spoke about the sun rising from the west. We spoke about how that happens. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned that the sun every day goes under the arsh and seeks permission to rise again from the east. And it so happens that it is given permission and then there will be a time when it will not be given permission and that is the time when belief will not be accepted by anyone. As for tawbah in general, we should mention that Tawbah has two cutoff points. Repentance in the life of a believer has two cutoff points. The first is when the soul leaves the body, and that is unique to each individual person. So each individual person's opportunity for Tawbah is cut off when the soul leaves the body. And that is different for every person. It's different for you, different for me, according to when we die, that Tawbah for us is cut off when the soul leaves the body. And then there is a general cutoff point when regardless whoever is alive or whoever is dead, then Tawbah is cut off from everyone who is alive at that point, even if they have not died before that Tawbah is cut off from them. And that is when the sun rises from the west, as in the hadith that we mentioned to you at the first part of the episode just before the break. And in Sahih Muslim, from the hadith of Abdullah ibn Amr, radiallahu anhumah, 
that he said, I heard the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say, Inna awwal al-ayat khurujan tulu' al-shams min maghribiha wa khuruj al-dabah duha fa'ayyatuha kanat qabla sahibatiha fal-ukhra ala ithriha. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Indeed, the first of the ayat to come will be the rising of the sun from the west. We said this does not mean it is the first out of the ten, but the first of the things which will immediately precede the Day of Judgment, as opposed to, we know, 40 years between Isa coming and Isa passing away. We know a period of Ya'juj and Ma'juj, that the Dajjal, 40 days, one day like a year, one day like a month, one day like the rest of the days. There is a period of time. These signs come one after the other after the other. The first of them to come one after the other is the rising of the sun from the west or the beast that will come out at Duha. The beast that will come out at Duha. And Duha, which is in the forenoon between the sunrise and between Dhuhr time. Between sunrise and Dhuhr time and most commonly when the sun starts to get hot. So it's like, for example, around 10 o'clock or something like that, when the sun starts to get really hot, this is the time that is most commonly known as duha. So the Prophet ﷺ said, whichever of them comes before the other, the other one will immediately follow it. Whichever one comes before the other, the other one will immediately follow it. And we said that we don't have an evidence. The Prophet ﷺ himself did not tell us which of them would come first, but he said whichever of them comes first, the other one will immediately follow. And some of the scholars said that perhaps the beast will come second as it will inform the people as to the result of which of them are disbelievers and it will tell about the falsehood of the religions. And Allah Azza wa Jal knows best it is quite possible that the beast will come first and the sun will rise from the west and then the beast will come after the sun immediately. Then the beast will begin to tell about the falsehood of the religions and Allah Azza wa Jal knows best. However, it is very clear that there is a, a link between the two. And that is because the beast will mark the people and likewise the rising of the sun represents the cutoff point, then the two of them clearly go together. The two of them clearly match as two signs that will come one after the other. And indeed, after that, it is only an extremely short time between that and between the blowing of the trumpet or the blowing of the horn. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. We're not told how long that time is. But the indication is that that time is extremely, extremely short. So now we come to the last of the signs, which we know the Prophet ﷺ mentioned as being the last of all of the signs. And that is the fire that will come from the direction of Yemen and push the people towards Asham. Prior to that, at some point, and again, it is not clear when this is, Allah Jal will send a wind which will blow upon every believer and will take the soul of every believer. And the Qur'an will be raised up to Allah Azza wa Jal prior to that. This is indicated in the hadith, as we've read in the hadith of Sahih Muslim. It is indicated that this will happen immediately after Isa alayhi salam. However, we don't know how that relates to the sun rising from the west. But we know that these things are happening in very, very close succession. Perhaps after Isa will pass away, alayhi salam, there will only be a very, very short time before these other major signs happen one after the other after the other. And Allah Azza wa Jal knows best how long there will be. But at some point in this period, somewhere around these signs before the fire pushes the people to their final place of gathering, the soul of every believer will be taken and the Qur'an will be raised up to Allah Azza wa Jal. Because as we said, the Qur'an is the speech of Allah. From Him it came and to Him it will return. So as for this fire that will come, all that will be left upon the earth are the most evil of people. The most evil and the most wicked of people. And we mentioned in a previous hadith, as you're now starting to get the chronology, you're now starting to put these events all together, that those wicked people the shaitan will come to them in the form of a man and they will say to him, what do you command us to do? And he will say to them, I command you to worship idols. And despite this, they will have an abundance of wealth and temporary happiness in this world. 
they will not be taken by a punishment of Allah because they are not aware that the greatest punishment of Allah is about to befall them at that time. And it will begin the day of judgment with the last of the major signs, and that is a fire. This fire will come from the direction of Yemen. And quite a lot is mentioned about the fire and about where it will come from. It is mentioned that it will come from Adid, which is what is termed as Aden. And it is also mentioned that this fire will come from the direction of Hadramaut. And Hadramaut is a famous city which until this day is well known in Yemen. From this direction, the fire will come. It is mentioned that this fire will come, as in some of the narrations, Aqsa Ardi Adan, the last part of the land of Aden. And this is an area which is well known, as we said, in the land of Yemen, as is mentioned, the city of Hadramaut. This fire will push the people in three ways, or the people will be in three different states. There will be those who are hopeful, rahibin. There are those who will be rahibin, terrified. I.e. There will be those who will be confident, and they will be rushing away from the fire, keeping ahead of the fire. There will be those who are terrified. There will be two upon a camel, and three upon a camel, and four upon a camel, and ten upon a camel. I.e. when the people see the fire, and the fire will surround them from every single direction, and they realize that they cannot escape this fire, and they cannot move away from it. So what the people will do is they will seek any means to move. Now at this point, it's worth mentioning that the ahadith of the end of days mention people being horsemen and riding upon camels. And they don't mention any other means of transport other than that, not even ships and so on and so forth. What does that mean? Does that mean that the world will return to a more basic form, that the technology will disappear? Allah knows best. We don't have a clear evidence for that, but we are told that the people who conquer Constantinople and go to fight against the Dajjal will be from the best horsemen at that time. And we can't change the word horse for anything else. A horse is clearly a horse. And it's mentioned that the fire will push people riding upon camels until 10 will be upon camels. As for how you can fit 10 people onto a camel, then some of the scholars mentioned that they will not all be sitting on a camel at once. Rather, what will happen is that as is the, the means when people are escaping by camel, something very quickly, what they do is they share the burden. So nine walk and one rides. Then they take it in turns and swap. But there will be so few animals that there will be 10 people waiting a turn to ride or two people ride at once, then two more, then two more, then two more. And the fire will stay with them when they sleep at night, i.e. when they take their camps to sleep, they will wake up and the fire will be with them until it pushes them and pushes them towards the direction of Asham, towards the direction of Syria. Some of the companions asked the Prophet wasallam what it means or what they should do if they see this fire and the Prophet wasallam instructed them to head towards Asham. Of course, we are told there will be none remaining except the most wicked of people. However, from the complete guidance of the Prophet wasallam is that even in this circumstance, he told the companions what to do. He didn't leave a single thing except that he informed his ummah about it. And he said that you should head for Asham. So this concludes our discussion regarding the major signs as much as Allah Azza wa has made easy for us. And inshaAllah ta'ala in the upcoming episode, we're going to start to look at what we've talked about from Kitab al-Fitan and Ashrat al-Sa'a from Sahih Muslim, the chapter of trials and tribulations and signs of the hour. And look to try to understand a methodology by which a Muslim can be saved from trials and tribulations and how indeed we have learned from these hadith a means to keep us safe, insha'Allah ta'ala. That will be in the upcoming episodes coming soon. So we'll see you then, insha'Allah. Until then, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.